アのためにちょっと低いかなと思いましたけど分かんないですけど。まあ What is up, Yakuza's? It's your favorite content creator about life in Japan, and I'm back with a new video. Today's video is going to be all about apartment hunting in Tokyo, and I'm very excited to finally start this series. But first, if you're new to this channel, my name is Ila, I go by Crazy La. I live in Japan, and every now and then I post videos about my life in Japan. The video can be a street interview, it could be a vlog, it could be a story time, different type of content, but all around life in Japan or life where I am actually. So if you like that type of content, you like the face, you like the vibes you like anything around here or you're interested in japan don't forget to subscribe but also follow me on my social media and all of that will be linked in the description box of this video and if you've been here already you are a yakuza thank you so much for tuning back in now let's get started Alright, so this is part one of apartment hunting in Japan and all of this started about, I cannot say the time because it's gonna be a surprise, <laughs> but it took me a long, long, long time. I started it in a very chill way. I didn't have any rush in my previous apartment. There wasn't any move out notice. I was just taking my time to find the perfect apartment for me. And I was living in Yokohama. Now don't get me wrong, Minato Mirai especially is one of the best area for me in Japan. And since I came here, I was always dreaming of living there actually but the circumstances under which I moved to Yokohama were not really you know good energy type of circumstances and I stayed there then I also found a job that wasn't very far from that apartment and with everything adding up me starting my PhD I just didn't find a room or any actual reason to move out from there then I met my boyfriend and it also coincided that I graduated for PhD I started a new job and a lot of change it happened in my life and I wanted to change my environment as well I wanted to go with something that is not only the top that I can afford in Tokyo but also a place that makes me feel joyful makes me feel alive stay patient we're gonna go into me showing you all the apartments but I just want to give you a little context before we get into that as many of you guys know on my channel I'm from Congo Kinshasa I'm a tropical person I'm very linked with nature and with the sunlight I noticed that when I live in a place where the sunlight is not really direct and there's no nature around my mental health really goes down fast I tend to live outside more I tend to spend more because I want to be in a restaurant in a garden in any place outside but in my apartment and use it only for a place to sleep and don't get me wrong I am very very grateful so far with every apartment that I've had in Japan the good the bad the ugly the bitter the nice the sweet I'm very grateful because I know all of that has been a journey and also an effort that I've done on my own with my own earnings so I'm proud and I'm grateful for that but this time I wanted to move and find something that is in Tokyo not only because as I said a lot of changes happened in my life but I also wanted to get closer to my job my commute from Yokohama to my job was about an hour with one of the worst busiest train line ever and I wanted something that's closer to my job within 30 minutes train commute or even use a bike what applications did I use for apartment hunting in Japan I used this application right here IT Hi, Ayati. It's fully in Japanese, but to be honest, it's not very difficult to use. You just have to input your email address and follow through. My favorite things about this application, and this video is not sponsored by them, is that you can directly communicate with agents. When you like something, you favorite it, and you can set the time you want to view it, see if it's available, and communicate with the agent very directly. So I really love that about this ap uh, application. Though everything is in Japanese, I use a lot of Google Translate, to be honest. What about the budget? We watch a lot of financial, not a lot, a few videos related to finances management and also what's the best price to set when you're looking for an apartment and my boyfriend and I came across a Netflix show of a guy that's giving advice to people to be honest it's a great show I forgot the name of it but I'm sure you'll find it somewhere on Netflix and one advice that stuck with my boyfriend and I is that your rent should never be above 30% of your income maybe many of you know it out there I didn't know about that and I was just like what why no why nobody told me about these things I don't know why we don't we don't really learn about how to manage our money in school I'm less thoughtful with money to be honest, less than my boyfriend, so we figure out a way to, you know, set a budget and try our best not to go above that. So we decided to go with 150 to 200,000 yen, probably about, what's that? Hey Siri, what's 200,000 yen in US dollars? 200,000 yen is 1,285 US dollars and 19 cents. Now the yen is killing me right now. Okay, in 
old days, 200,000 yen was about $2,000 as well. So let's just say $1,500 to $2,000 by then. And now it seems like it's about from $800 to $1,200. <laughs> New Yorkers looking at me will be like, ah, that's so low, that's so cheap. No, it ain't. In Japan, it ain't. So that was our budget. The location we were going for where we went by Ku, right? Ku is like township. So in Tokyo, but within Tokyo, we had specific Ku. Let's say I had because I'm a I'm demanding a little bit. <laughs> for my boyfriend, the most important thing was distance, to be honest, to work. But for me, I was like, okay, I'm an active person. I'm a creative. I also want a certain aesthetic around me and inside and out. So I wanted to go for Azabu, Minato. I don't even know that many ku. I just know where they are. So Shirokane. So something around Shinagawa, Shinbashi, and the uh, Tenozo Island and around those areas. If you know Tokyo, you know about what I'm talking about. It's basically uh, eastern part of Tokyo, mostly. And when it comes to the interior, I need something that was a little more modern i wanted a walk-in closet absolutely no to tatami if you guys have been on my channel for a while you know that i resent maybe that's a, a, a huge word but i'm not really a huge fan of the japanese aesthetic japan the aesthetic uh, uh, tatami and wooden and uh, those closets that looks like a like a hole that i've been having <laughs> all the time when i find an apartment i was going for anything but that that's what i'm trying to say let's be clear i'm not saying i don't like visiting it looking at it going to a restaurant that have that aesthetics but i don't want to live in it 24 7. also when it comes to toilet i wanted a bidet compulsory toilet that that's separated from the bathroom we wanted to go for one or two bedrooms because i am creative i sometimes want my little space as well and arna is also creative because because he has uh, his little piano, he makes music. He was a drummer, he's a drummer. I mean, in Japan, he's not practicing anymore. I'm sorry, I'm just putting his business out there. Anyways. And I, oh. This <laughs> just to say, we needed space for our creativity. So one bedroom or two bedroom would be fine, but the bedroom should be separated from the living room. Because right now, you know, my apartment in Yokohama is a one uh, studio. I needed a balcony because I want I don't even think that's something I need to justify. I needed the balcony and that's on period. And I needed sunlight. Sunlight uh, in Japan is gold. It's gold because Tokyo is so busy. There's a building on another and they're facing each other and blah, blah, blah. But I didn't care. I was like, if I have to pay an extra 10,000 yen for sunlight, I'll, I'll go for it because I know what he has done in seven years, lacking sunlight. So I needed a big windows that face south. Boy, if you don't. And I also needed big windows, actual big windows. In Japan, people prioritize their, their privacy and all the architecture is constructed in a way that the windows are the smallest possible. And for some reason, the doors are... Anyways, I needed big glass windows, like normal apartment, like anywhere else in the world, okay? So that's my criteria. Now, finally, let's get into the first apartment that I that we visited. This happened when my cousin was still around. You can see her throughout the video when she came to visit me in Japan. Here's the layout of the apartment. It was 190,000 Japanese yen. It was in an area that they call Italia Town in Shimbashi. It's a pretty area, I think in Japan they're very proud of it not in japan in tokyo they're very kind of proud of it one thing about these applications when you're looking for apartment they don't really show everything they show something and they hide others so you really have to visit the apartment before you get in and uh so the plan was one thing and the reality was something else what? i've got an internet crush she's not a celebrity but she's taken so can't i fall in love can't take the hint and give up My mama told me don't talk to people you haven't met I guess my mama was right But it's not cause everybody you meet is dangerous That cause they'll break your heart Cause she plays it so cool making up her own rules And I'm a loser for thinking I've got Shot in the dark, now it's hitting me hard Tell me what am I supposed to do? Cause I've got an internet crush She's not a celebrity, but she's taken So can I fall in love? Can't take the hint and give up I've got it I never said 
apartment when I was looking at it from the website but unfortunately it wasn't faithful to what was on the website it was showing the plan of another floor so probably the third or the second I don't know another floor and the floor we were at you can see my face expression getting really really annoyed uh, was not having a window like on the living area so first the sunlight wasn't really it it wasn't facing south neither east it was just no sunlight at all because there was a building in front of it and of course that detail was not shown i had tried to check on google maps and you know satellite images but sometimes they don't give you the exact address as well or it's not shown on google maps because of privacy reasons or something like that there's just stuff you cannot figure out digitally you have to go there so unfortunately i couldn't hide my face expression and i wish i did that a little more because it's not really nice like while i was editing i was like why are you so mad at each <laughs> like i can and i know that my boyfriend already knew looking at my face that that wasn't it like i look at it, i was like yeah no first of all you're not lying to me that there's a big ass windows in the living room when there's no windows like what's up with that that's like <sniffs> anyways to be honest uh this area is nice but the only weak point of it is that you don't really have supermarkets around it's just a working area and drinking area but not really a living area supermarkets are very far and activities like nice cafes and stuff are really far away so you just go to work and come back to sleep so that was one of the weaknesses they had a lot of storage as well i didn't like the fact that the moment you get in you directly land on, uh, in the kitchen that's one of the design that i don't like about one ldks in japan you enter in a corridor with the kitchen and then in an open space open not always so I didn't like that. The bathroom was also nice. Everything was not very clean. You can see that we inside with the shoes. The agent allowed us to get inside with the shoes. And that means it wasn't cleaned yet. So it was a lot more dusty and you know, just a little not clean. Closet was nice as well. 
I like the balcony because it's bigger than what I have in Yokohama. So I was like, okay, more space. But look at me pointing at the fact that there's no sunlight. And this was noon. I'm like, if it's noon, it feels this dark. I don't want it. And I think you cannot show faithfully on the video because I have changed the saturation and I've edited it out. But yeah, it wasn't very bright. And uh, the separation of the bedroom from the living room also wasn't something I like with those sliding doors. I want a door. I want an actual wall and a door i want i don't want that much contact because i want uh, privacy when i'm in the bedroom and uh, and my boyfriend in the living room for example just give us space separation and i also wanted a king size or queen size bed which is not really the thing in japan people are comfortable with futon and very small bed so i didn't like this apartment my boyfriend was like okay with it but i think we couldn't even probably not pass the screening because they're very demanding as well when it comes to uh, having a foreigner and having two foreigners uh, what are the visa what are their income so they there's a lot of documents and some of them don't accept people to live together when they're not married or they don't have any legal status that they can like see I don't know validate for Japan like boyfriend and girlfriend living together is not really a thing it's not a status so one person needs to be in charge of all the finances and stuff so this means they will be considering one person's finances uh, and uh, evaluate if he can afford the place or not not to people's finances so I'm sure this apartment although we didn't like it the owner wouldn't like us either apartment number two apartment Apartment number two was 165,000 yen. The windows were facing north, so that was already a no-go for me, but I was like, let me see what it gives in real life. They had two bedrooms, which is, you'll see, two bedrooms and the living room. Then when we went to visit, I realized that I'm not a huge fan of the living room that are stuck in between bedrooms and entrance and they don't have any opening to outside all oh, only like small windows anyways so here is their problem <laughs> So this is how it looks like the the kitchen was pretty nice i think three cooking areas these windows were ridiculous like it wasn't mentioned and not shown clearly on the website or on the application that they are so low like that and i understand this style it's when the rooftop is like uh, oblique and they have to figure out ways to have a nice architecture a nicely built uh i don't know bedroom or whatever but these windows were just upsetting i was so upset <laughs> and again i have to learn how to better hide my face expression because people in japan don't have strong face expressions like that they really work with the eyes like this area but not really the, the entire thing and my face was just like you know you look at me and you know i just want to get the hell out of there <laughs> this was supposedly the walk-in closet so what i did is i walked the park in <laughs> and was just sizing myself i'm like what am i supposed to put in here three coats or something i'm a woman we have clothes like that i'm sorry it's like that's not the closest for me I feel bad now. Like, I was just like, ew, get me the hell out of here.
We used to have each other's playlists No, no We used to be each other's best friends Yeah And now we go our separate pathways But your heart's still in mine Yeah And maybe we could try it next week Again But I don't wanna think we're toxic But who cares You said that we're over Hands under covers alone This time But everything I see Still reminds me of you Back of all your things The memories of when I kissed you I think Arne had a problem with any of this to be honest. Uh, for him, space was the most important thing and this tends to work as I said. But he was just looking at my face thinking, this woman. <laughs> <laughs> this woman, I don't like. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't really ready to compromise on anything because I know the effect of me living in a place I don't like on my mental health, on my creativity, on my quality of life, really. And I'm living in Japan. Why not give myself the best life I can? Like, I'm young, I'm making money, like, I deserve nice things too. Why? <laughs> Who am I saving for like that? Anyway, so the last apartment for this part one is this one bedroom, as we say in Japan, one LDK with a kitchen island as well. It was the biggest, about 53 square meter. The windows were facing north. I mean, they had windows on both sides, so that's great. And one, uh, one side facing north and the other side facing south, obviously. The size was really attractive. This is also Shinagawa. They had a walk-in closet as well, so that was nice. And the apartment cost 190,000 Japanese yen, like the first apartment. The agent was like very brutally honest with us. It was interesting to, to, to hear. To the level that when we were like, well, this is a nice neighborhood. Like we were looking at the view and she was like, yeah, but you know that the Yakuza's headquarters is just around the corner. <laughs> I was like, bruh, who says that? <laughs> but that was really helpful and a defining factor. Not for me though. It's not like I'm scared of them like that. Maybe because I don't understand the depth of it like that. I was just like, okay, thanks for the information. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get the apartment because of that. So yeah, we were about to leave close to Yakuza's. First thing I didn't like about the apartment is of course the entrance, the common area. What's that? It looked like a jail. <laughs> it looked so much like a jail. The toilet was nice and it has a lot of storage is what I loved about this. I have a lot of things to be, I mean, compared to my boyfriend. I know ladies out there, you know how it goes. You buy one thing and then you buy another and then you buy another one, okay? So I have quite a lot of shoes, a lot for according to my boyfriend. For me, it's just like normal. I grew up around ladies that really love fashion. My mom, my aunties, they were like always on the top of their fashion game. On top of that, I'm Congolese. There's just something about Congolese people with fashion, I guess, I don't know. So I have quite a lot of things to store and I need a lot of storage, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the other thing I didn't like about this place is the view. The quote unquote south facing apartment where the sun is supposed to come through at is in the middle of buildings, literally three buildings. You open the balcony and you're just in front of Tatemono, 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 what? And this of course is a detail that wasn't shown in the application. The moment they show the window, the blur the outside and stuff for privacy reasons as well, but also because they know it's some bullshit. Though I love the size of it, the design also felt a little older. Like this reminded me of the old colonial houses in Congo, like the old houses that Belgian people built in Kinshasa and, and no Kinshasa I don't even see like this anymore I think they're probably downtown by Lubumbashi as well like you see this kind of design wooden rounded stuff it's giving like colonial design I don't know it just reminded me of those houses so it felt a little old the kitchen was nice it's big it gives us room to cut to like you know have two people cook there without being anxious or yelling at each other but this color who came up with black for kitchen? I don't know, this color was just not it. Because you know when the space is small, you want to have brighter colors so that it looks a little bigger. That's advices I know from like uh, design, interior designers on the internet. 
but this right here was not it i was thinking should i add if i get this place i would add like paper wall stickers wall stickers or whatever they call sticker papers that to just change the color maybe something that's a little bit marbre mm, marbre like not anything blackish and oily like that that was not my type of vibe a little mirror i need a lot of light as well in the mirror area for makeup tutorials not tutorial for makeup and for my reels recording and tiktoks and stuff like that the place was really really big but it was also dark so it wasn't that bright uh, as it was supposed to be on paper <laughs> closet i think this was my favorite walk-in closet so far because you're actually walking in the damn closet and you have space when you walk in so you can still put a lot of stuff up and down and on the left you can add a little extra uh, storage area shelf maybe from ikea or nitori um, it's an upgrade from what i have in yokohama so i loved that closet and here comes the view uh to the yakuza headquarter whatever <laughs> Should I show it? I don't know. Yeah, it was bound to be a noisy apartment as well because of the railways just across the room, literally. So by my face expression, you can see that I'm a little more <laughs> accepting, tolerating what I'm seeing. I'm like, okay, this is a little more acceptable than what I visited uh, in the last two, uh, two apartment hunting. <laughs> guys that's it for my apartment hunting in tokyo part one you can see that i haven't found an apartment at this stage yet because of my face expression in the video i'm being demanding and with reason because i deserve nice things too okay and if i can afford them why not so i really really hope you enjoyed it and if you have any question or any tip for apartment hunting or you want to share your experience apartment hunting in uh, japan in tokyo area please let us know in the comment section i'll see you in the next video for part two of my apartment hunting in Tokyo so stay tuned and I'll say mite kurete arigato gozaimashita don't forget to subscribe bye